There's tough competition between venues to be able to offer flexibility, cutting edge technology and value for money. I'm at the QE2 Centre in Westminster with Deborah Jones to find out how they are keeping one step ahead of the pack. So Deborah, tell me about the QE2 Centre. We have about 400 events a year, maybe more, and at any one time we can be rigging and de-rigging and holding events on five floors of conference, 32 rooms of space. Inside, we have transformed it. It's now got Italian floors, it's got superbly designed desks for registration. It's fully functional, but also has style. What AV challenges are you facing within the conference and live event environment? The first challenge we have is that they're building an awful lot of venues within the Westminster area, actually within our core area. And we have to meet the challenge of that extra competition. It's far greater than when the centre was first built. And the second challenge is, of course, the outside environment, the technology, is a constantly changing feature. We have been purchasing new equipment, we have upgraded, and above all, we are changing the entire look of the centre. Let's talk about social media for a second. Is that important to your clients? It's increasingly important to our clients. And in fact, so much so that we've actually developed a team of people to deal with it. It is really the best marketing tool. You can create a community before, during and after your event. We can create digital canvases during the meetings so they can have uh, the head and shoulders shot, the speakers, they can have biographies coming up. It can all be part of an event application. We're looking at designing event applications that sit on you know, a web browser. We're looking at all these different enhancements and different services we can offer our clients. Because if our client base is changing, then we have to run with that. Now, you mentioned digital canvas there. Does that mean 4K? 4K is really important in terms of development. Um, we're probably more looking, um, we're more interested, I should say, in pro pro providing something that looks like perhaps a soft blend system, but is actually just a, a really good quality way of pipping the separate images that we have to incorporate in that screen. And we can do that with one projector with a 4K system. And in that way, we can save the client money and also produce a really quality and sophisticated image for them. Are all of your AV services in-house or do you subcontract both labour and technology? We do a bit of both. We have a hugely varied client base and do lots and lots of different types of events. And in fact, as part of our business strategy, we are trying to enhance that. We're trying to increase the kind of flexible spaces that we have and put different kinds of events into them. So in order to do that, um, in the main, we've actually purchased some equipment. We're putting in new screens, we're putting in new projectors, but a lot of that we would sub-hire because the client hasn't led that demand as yet, and so we're waiting to see what's going to happen before we purchase. But we are um, becoming fully HD, and we are upgrading all our audio in line with that as well, because there are going to be big changes in audio in the next few years. What about AV and IT integration? Is this an important part of the QE2 Centre's offering? Um, it's always been an important part. Uh, we actually have specialist engineers for both sides of it, but the best example of collaboration on an everyday basis would be our IPTV system. Quite often our clients have to take a risk when they're booking a room. They have to guess at the number of delegates they're going to get. For the most part, they guess correctly, but we frequently have to relay sound and vision to another area. So IPTV is the perfect collaboration insofar as we use the network, just put an encoder at one end and a decoder at the next, Everybody wins, it's quite budget conscious, and they don't have to take quite so much risk. How are you able to show a performance differentiator between your venue and other venues in London? We have just won the AV Service Team of the Year Award with AV Magazine. So we're up in front of 900 of our peers. I have to say it was a fabulous evening. For me, that was the highlight of the year. Now, I understand you're a member of the AV User Group. Tell us a bit about that. It is exclusively for people who are looking at new equipment, just for the audiovisual sector as well. If I have a, a query or, or some interesting problem that I want to share, or I've just found a piece of kit that I'm thinking 
that we, we could probably use at the center and I can ask them what the value of it is. Um, I can even ask them what they're charging for the hire of it. There are all sorts of advantages to belonging to a community like that. Tell me about security at the QE2 centre. Way back in 1986 when the centre was first built, it was built with security in mind. If you look outside, we've got a dry moat. It's hard to drive over cobbles. There's no direct route down. It's a defensive looking building, more so than probably MI6. On the technology side, we've enhanced security. We've built a fibre backbone, we can provide encryption, we have secure lines to the BT Tower, and there are all sorts of ways we can make our client feel that they're safe in our hands. Now, Feltech has a very long association with the QE2 Centre. Peter Fell from Feltech has been here way before I came on the scene. Um, it's transformed since he's been on the scene um, and the latest transformation is with what I call our penthouse suite upstairs where we've upgraded all our projection systems this August and it's been a tremendous success.